Okay. All right. So um, let's do a, a bit of a recap here. So we saw a couple classes ago uh, the derivative of ln of x. Uh, you guys remember? What is that? 1 over x. Um, do you guys remember what the derivative of log base, say, x is? Where does the ln of a go? Oh, uh, yeah, on the bottom, right? So 1 over uh, x times ln of a. You can just use the change of base formula to get it. So it's nothing fancy, really. Um, and uh, okay, so that that's the derivative of the um, logarithms. But let's say, for example, you need to get the derivative of something that looks pretty ugly. Let's say the log of you know I don't know x squared times x to the fifth minus four to the seventh divided by square root of x times I don't know x minus one squared. Something like that. All right, so this looks pretty bad, right? This looks worse than any other derivative we have ever done ever in our entire lives. Because what would you have to do? You'd have to do the log derivative, right? And then what would you have to do after that? You'd have to do a quotient rule, right? Inside the quotient rule, you would have to do the two power rules and in the power rules you would have to do chain rule for every part of that right so that's pretty bad right I mean it could get worse but that's pretty bad okay but recall they we have the laws of logs and the laws of logs uh, let's see maybe we have I'll just put them right here so um, if I, for example, have log base a of a times b, how can I rewrite that? Log of a plus log of b. So I can break it up, right? OK, now imagine what, what the implication of this is for derivatives. If I look at this, getting the derivative of this kind of function, it would involve doing a product rule when I get the derivative of a times b, right? But if I break it up, notice, into two separate logs, do I have to do the product rule now? I no longer have to do it, right? So, okay, so you can probably guess where this is going. So now if I have the other, this other law, right, what is this equal to? Log of a minus log of b. And then we have one more. Uh, let's see, I'll put C here. So this is equal to C times log of A, right? Okay, so, um, all right, so what does that uh, allow us to do? Well, what we can do is instead of getting the derivative of this mess, I can rewrite as. So if I use these laws here, um, I can rewrite this as, uh, so uh, in al when you guys took algebra class, you guys did this step by step. We're not going to do this step by step. We're just going to do it in one step, okay? Are you guys ready? Okay, so if I look at this, when I multiply, what, what law do I use? I break it up into addition, right? <coughs> when you divide, you break it up into subtraction right and then notice the exponents come out in front right so these guys are going to come out in front yes you with me okay all right so I'm going to try to make it fit in this little space that I have right here so um, then what is what is no maybe I shouldn't try okay I'm, this is what I'm going to do I'm going to erase this you guys have it on your sheet right okay so you guys don't really need it then all right so then, what is this equal to? This is equal to the derivative of, so if I break this up, I'm going to have ln, actually, uh, let me do this. Uh, okay, this one right here is going to be 
ln of x. You guys agree with that? So the 2 comes out in front, right? And then ln of x. Okay, now is this going to be plus or minus? Plus. plus. Good. So plus 7 ln of x to the fifth minus 4, right? You with me so far? Okay, now the next one, this one down here, is that going to be plus or minus? Minus. Minus, because it's on the denominator, right? So minus, how many ln of x is, is that? One half. one half, right? Because the square root of x is, uh, the exponent is one half. Okay, and then the last one, this one right here, is that going to be a plus or a minus? Minus. Okay, here both plus and minus. It's actually a minus. Why is it a minus? Yeah, you have to distribute the minus sign, right? It's because it's when you break up the division here, it's minus the whole denominator, right? So it's plus in the denominator, but you distribute the minus sign. So uh, okay, so that's what we're getting the derivative of. Now, if you look at that, does that look easy or difficult? That's pretty easy, right? Because it's just a bunch of constants and um, the derivative of the natural log is not that bad. So what's this first one? The derivative of 2 ln of x? That's 2 over x, right? Okay. Plus 7 over x to the fifth minus 4, right? But then times what? Times the derivative of the inside, right? Which is 5x to the fourth. Okay. Then the next one, minus 1 over 2x, right? And then the last one is minus 2 over x minus 1. And that's it. Why didn't I do the chain rule on that very last one? Because the derivative of it is 1, right? So I would have written it down like that times 1, which you can, but you typically just don't. So. All right, so, so far so good? Does that make sense? All right, so that actually is not logarithmic differentiation. So this is getting the derivative of a log function, but what we did is we used um, the laws of logs to help us break it up to make it easier, right? Okay, but what we can do is, for example, um, let's say, for example, um, you want to get the derivative of something weird like sine of x raised to the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, now at first glance you might think of getting the derivative of this by simply applying the chain rule, right? Because you might be thinking, well, um, self, myself, I know how to get the derivative of, for example, well, let's say a to the x, right? What is that derivative? A to the x times ln of a. <laughs> is this the appropriate rule for this kind of function? No. What's the problem with that? Base is, yeah. So here, notice the base is a constant, right? So this is for things like 4 to the x, 10 to the x, 100 to the x. But here, what you have is it's a function that's the base. Well, what do you do when the base is a function? Like if I have x to the n, let's say. Oh, well, I know that rule, right? Nx to the n minus 1. Is that the appropriate rule? Using that with the chain rule. No. What's the problem with that? Because the, exponent. the exponent is not constant, right? So you have a function being raised to another function. Have we ever seen any rule that tells us how to find these derivatives? Never. Ever. Okay. So what do we do? We use logarithmic differentiation, which is the whole point of this section. That's right. That is exactly right. You guys hit the nail on the head. Okay, <laughs> all right, so we decided neither of these, so these do, do not work, work for this, 
for this function raised to another function, right? That's the situation we have. Now, if you ever need to find the derivative of a function raised to another function, how many different techniques do you have that allow you to do this? One. It's the only one technique. It's called logarithmic differentiation. No, not the chain rule. But I thought we've done other we've, techniques. We've never, never. We've done this, for example, if I change this to, say, um, a 5, that we can do, right? Because it's a constant, the exponent. So you bring down the 5, leave the inside alone, subtract 1, inside, outside, all that jazz, right? But here you have a function being raised to another function. Yes? Did you apply? No, but go ahead, ask the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Say it was a constant, not a function. Yeah. Could you apply logarithmic difference? You can, but it's way more work. Or it's, it's much easier to just do the chain rule. Because it's it would be extra steps to do logarithmic differentiation. But you could do it. You could. Um okay. All right. So let's do it. Uh it's actually not very complicated. Um and uh so it involves so here's uh let's see, maybe over here. Mm, I think I'll scratch out a little space here. Okay, first thing you want to do um, is, um, well, so this isn't actually a, one of the steps. Actually, I'm not going to write it as a step, but let me rewrite this. So you want to make sure that you have it written as a function. So f of x is equal to sine of x, and then... And actually, just to make sure that we're clear, this is this is what we're getting the derivative of. So the sine of x all raised to um, the square root of x squared minus 1, like that. Um, OK, so that's not actually a step. But we want to make sure that we have it written like that. Otherwise, it'll confuse us, probably. Um, OK, so the first thing you want to do is take the ln of both sides. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to get ln of the left side and the ln of the right side. Okay, so so far, uh, let's see here, sine of x. Okay, now after we do that, um, then you want to use the LOLs. What are those? Lots of laughs. <laughs> but um, bum. Just kidding. Okay. Yeah. What are those? <laughs> Math jokes. <laughs> Laws of logarithms <laughs> to simplify. Okay, so basically what you're trying to do is get rid of the exponent, right? So the exponent that was on the exponent, so you want to get rid of it so that you don't have that situation where you have a function raised to a function. So, um, well, that's not difficult, right? Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to have on the left ln of f of x equals 2. So what would this look like if I use the laws of logs? Mm -hmm times ln of sine of x, right? So far, so good? So it's not complicated, right? Okay, now take a wild guess what step three is. You can probably guess. Yep. So take the derivative of both sides, right? And this we know how to do because it's just implicit differentiation, right? So. Uh, I've done this before, so you take the derivative of both sides. So derivative of the left side, derivative of the right side. Okay, now, uh, what is the derivative of the uh, left side? Okay, one over f of x, right? What else? times the derivative of the inside, right? Times f prime of x. And actually, let me, uh, I'll put this one in red just to make sure that we're clear it's a different function, right? 
So f prime of x, which is actually what we're looking for, right? So we're eventually going to solve for f prime of x because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the derivative of f, the original function. Um, okay, but is it clear why the f prime of x is in there? From what rule? Chain rule. Yes. Good. Okay. Now, what is that equal to? Now, here you have to be careful. Very common mistake. Notice right here, what are these two functions doing? They're multiplying, right? So what rule do I have to use? Product rule. Don't forget to do the product rule here. Okay, so what would that be? That would be, if I get the derivative of the first here, that would be 1 over 2 square root of x squared minus 1 times 2x, right? Times ln of sine x uh, plus square root of x squared minus 1 times 1 over what? Sine of x times cosine of x. can do a little sim simplify that get those twos right there right um, and so so far so good okay so then uh, last thing is just solve for f prime of x so f prime of x is equal to uh, everything I had before so I'm just gonna rewrite this x ln of sine x over square root of x squared minus 1 plus uh, well, just for fun. Although you don't have to. What's cosine x over sine x? Cotangent of x. Okay. And then this times what? F of x, right? So I take this and I multiply both sides by f of x, right? So basically, this is what I'm doing. Um, but what is f of x? That's my original function, right? Which is this right here. So then I would write... Uh, sine of x raised to the square root of x squared minus 1 there. And that's it. That's the derivative right there. What do you guys think? Not too bad, right? So just, you know, little details that you want to make sure uh, that you keep track of. And here I forgot to write down step 4. Uh, solve for f prime of x, right? All right, so questions on that. Yes. Did you get ln, um, ln of sine x? Ln of, where did I get it? Yeah, like it's from the product rule. Wait, oh, right, this one right here? Yeah. So it's from the product rule for, from these, right? So we got the derivative of the first function times the second function, oh, okay. and then plus the first function times the derivative of the second. Okay, any other questions? You guys want to try one? Yes? Sure, okay, all right, uh, try. Let's see, how about secant x raised to the x. Find f prime of x. Okay, so uh, let me just rewrite the function down here. So secant x raised to the x. Okay, so you get the derivative of both sides, right? And. Um, oh, sorry. Getting ahead of myself here. You get the derivative of the ln of both sides. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, okay. Um, so ln of both sides, just making sure you guys are paying attention. <laughs> and so then I would have x times ln of secant x, right? Yep. Okay. So then um, I get the derivative of both sides. 
And so then I would have 1 over f of x times f prime of x, right, on the left side. And this is equal to... What goes on top? Does that look right? Yeah? Any questions? Okay. Um, okay, so it's the derivative of ln of secant x. So it's 1 over secant x, right, which is this times the derivative of secant x. So remember the derivative of secant x is secant x times tangent x. And then this x is just the original x right there, right? Any other questions, questions? No? Okay, so the secant x is actually cancel, right? So no need to keep them both around there. And then, so what do I get for, um, so f prime of x, is equal to ln of secant x uh, plus x tangent x uh, times f of x, which is secant x raised to the x, right? Does that make sense? Any other questions with that? Does that sound reasonable? Okay, um, another use case for um, uh, logarithmic differentiation is if you have a function that um, involves a lot of products and quotients. So like for example, let's say you have, um, let's say you have uh, three to the square root of x times log base 3 of x times x to the fifth minus 3 to the seventh power. All that divided by square root of x minus 2 raised to the 1 fourth times secant of x times <laughs> you just start thinking of uh, and then times oh I don't know <laughs> 2 <laughs> 2 to the x I guess um, just to make it okay now if I were to get the derivative of this just straight away would it be fun or sad very sad, right? It would definitely not fit on my sheet um, of paper, and it probably wouldn't fit on yours either. So, um, okay, but you can do something similar, right? Because notice you're multiplying all this stuff, right? And then you're dividing here. So what if you do, even though you don't need to do logarithmic differentiation, what if you do it anyways to help you break it up into more manageable pieces? Does that make sense? So, um, so this is a case where you don't need to, but you um, you can. So uh, let's see here. So you get the log of both sides, right? So you take it here, get the log of both sides. All right. So we're going to have ln of f of x. I'm going to try to write smaller so that it can all fit. <laughs> Hopefully we can make it work. All right. So what's my first one going to look like? So how many terms am I going to have? How many logs? Six logs, right? Okay. So one for every factor, right? So three on top and three on the bottom. So that's going to be give me six logs. So what's the very first log going to be? Uh, this one right here. Square root of x times ln of three, right? Okay. All right. What's the second one? Plus, nope. Uh, 
Not LN of X. Nope. LN of? Nope. Nope. So those, so those three uh, terms up there are multiplying, right? So it's three separate terms. Or does it have any exponent? The second one, this one right here. No exponents, right? So can I bring an exponent down? No. Um, so it's going to be plus ln of exactly whatever is in there, right? So basically it's just ln of log base 3 of x, right? Because that's what the term is, and so then that's what the factor is, so then there's nothing to do, right? Okay, all right. So we can't always simplify it. Uh, let's see. Uh, what about the next one? 7 ln of x to the fifth minus 3. Good. Uh, and then what about down here? Minus 1 fourth ln of root x minus 2. Uh, let's see. And then minus ln of secant x, right? And then minus x ln 2. Okay, so now this looks terrible, but it, but it is not even close to as bad as it would have been if we would have left it alone, right? And try to get the derivative of using the quotient rule and the product rule and all the chain rules that we would need and all that stuff. Um, so it's bad, but it's not that bad. So any questions about breaking it up and then anything like that? Is that okay? All right, so now let's get the derivative of both sides. So on the left side, uh, I would have 1 over f of x times f prime of x. So if I get the derivative of both sides, this is going to equal to... Okay, so what's the derivative of root x times ln of 3? Do I have to do the product rule there? No, because ln of 3 is a constant, right? So no product rule ne necessary. So it's just going to be ln of 3 times the derivative of root x, which is 1 over 2 root x. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and then <coughs> what's the derivative of the natural log of the log base 3 of x? So what rule do I have to use there? chain rule, right? So 1 over log base 3 of x and then on time then I'm going to multiply, right? times the derivative of log base 3 of x, which is what's the derivative of, one, of log base 3 of x? One over ln of three times x. So on top, I still just have a one, right? Does that make sense? If I just combine it into one fraction. Okay. What about the next one? So this is going to be plus. Plus what? 1 over x to the 5th minus 3, right? And then times... 7 times 5x to the 4th, right? 7 times 5x to the 4th. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see. Minus 1 4th. And it's 1 over square root of x minus 2, right? Okay. And then times the derivative of square root of x minus 2, which is 1 over 2 root x, right? Okay. Uh, let's see here. And then minus the derivative of ln of secant x. Okay, 
So seek and X. So notice the secants cancel again, right? So it's just going to be tangent of X. Is that so? Is it okay if I just go? Because I'm running out of room, so it would be helpful if I just had tangent only. <laughs> okay, so it ends up being just tangent, right? <clears throat> okay, and then the very last one. What is it? Ln of two, right? Because it's the derivative of x, which is one times ln of two, because ln of two is a constant. Okay, so then what is f prime of x? So f prime of x is all of that, and I, now I really ran out of room, right? All of that times the original function, which I'm not going to write down because uh, now I really don't have room, right? But it's that mass that we have inside there, right, times the original function f of x. Um, that's the derivative. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yeah? Like that. Something like that. Okay, so questions? No? Yes? Under what circumstance would cosmic derive? Um, <laughs> well, um, the technique of logarithmic differentiation <laughs> uh, would be useful in uh, certain cases. Um, now, probably not as ugly as this, but eh, it's good practice, you know, helps make sure that you know what you're doing. Um, but the other case where you have a function raised to a function, that would be, yeah, very common. Yes. Uh, because, okay. So if I have this, so this is one of those that it's hard because it's, it's simple. So uh, this right here, it's ln of 2. This is a constant, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this is your function. So the derivative of this is just the derivative of x times the constant, right? The constant, you just leave it out, and you get the derivative of the function. And the derivative of x is just 1, so then you end up with just ln of 2. And so this is, it's kind of one of those things that starts getting a bit blurry. As you start learning more techniques, like the simple stuff starts getting difficult, if that makes sense. Um, because you start seeing things different. Like the ln, all, the ln of a constant all of a sudden looks like a function. So you think, oh, I need to do the product rule and I need to do all this stuff. Um, but you don't really, right? So like if you have, um, you know, I don't know, stuff like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. make up something here what's the derivative of that for example how would you find the derivative of that <laughs> nope no, absolutely not definitely two. not I mean you can yes you can but if you did the quotient rule here you probably would make a mistake because it means that you're not seeing it clearly what is e squared constant. it's a constant what is ln of 3 constant. it's a constant so really, the way you, you really want to look at this is this is e squared over ln of 3. This is your constant times the derivative of 1 over x. And how should you get the derivative of 1 over x? Not the quotient rule, right? How should you look at it? Yeah. Yeah, you move it up. You know, you think of it this way, x to the minus 1, right? So then when you get the derivative of that, You know, what do you get? You get minus x to the minus 2, which you then simplify. It's minus 1 over x squared, right? But um, but that's one of the things is, um, you know, simple things like constants start, it starts to get a little bit blurry as you learn more. So. Um, yeah, go ahead. I got confused when I, in the brackets, once it were log k3x, ln 3x, how, how do you get a um, derivative of? 
So it's the same thing, the chain rule, right? So the derivative of ln is 1 over whatever the function is inside, right? right? So it's 1 divided by log base 3 of x. Okay, then you multiply that times the derivative of the inside function. What's the derivative of, if I just had the derivative of log base 3 of x just by itself, Nope. 1 over x times ln of 3, right? So then you multiply those two together, and so they're all in the denominator together. Yeah, and remember, where does that come from? Uh, so here, let me erase some stuff because it's... So it's been a little while since we talked about it, but like if I have the derivative of log base a of x, let's say, <clears throat> what you do is you, you really, what you do is you change this into, you use the change of base formula, right? Basically, uh, to change it to um, a base that you know what the derivative is. So we know the derivative of ln of x is one over x. So if I wanna change the base from a to e, what would that be? That would be ln of x divided by ln of a, right? So it's, you use your uh, new base and then divided by the old base, right? Log of the old base. So then when you get the derivative of that, this is just one over x. And again, what's ln of a? That's a constant, right? So it just stays there, right? It's a constant multiplying your function. So then you just keep it keep it down there. So what is the return what do you do if the derivative is over seven? Uh because it's a constant. Because it's the constant seven is multiplying our function. So it's a, yeah, it's the same idea. So the seven is the constant multiplying my function. So it just stays there. And then I get the derivative of the function ln of x to the fifth minus three. So that's one over x to the fifth minus three, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is five x to the fourth. <coughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's, it is, I mean, it's interesting how, you know, like when you very, the very first time you saw, you know, oh, what's the derivative of 2x? You didn't even think twice, right? What's the derivative of that? Well, that's just 2. Did you use the product rule? Did you have to do any of that? No, right? It's just the constant, you leave it out, and then you get the derivative of the function. And then as you start learning more techniques, then you start, like, forgetting some of those things. They start kind of getting mixed up. Um, and so just, you know, just be careful, uh, making sure you identify the constants. If you have a constant multiplying your function, then, you know, just take it out and then get the derivative of, of the function. Like this, what's the derivative of that? Zero, right? Why? Because pi is a constant, right? You don't use the power rule there because pi is a constant. Um, uh, did you have a question, Alex? Yeah, That's what you were saying. This one? Um, any other questions? No? Okay. Um, then let's take a break.